New Orleans would be the second. But she uh, just wants to party. Party? <laughs> party? I'm gonna go with well, no, I mean, there's, there's no graveyards like there are in southern Louisiana. Hi. Hi. Hey. Oh, yeah. When you two first met each other, like in season one, did you guys think you were going to be like best friends? Uh, no, we're still not. <laughs> no, talking about. You know, um, I think you you're like, oh, cool. And I think so. He and I have both worked for a long, relatively long time. I've done five years on a TV show. I've done different movies. And I heard who said it. I think I heard Geraldo on Celebrity Apprentice. Saying they were like, I think Donald Trump was like, well, are you going to be friends with them? And he's like, well, friendly, but friends is tough because, you know, I live in New York and they live, or whatever he was talking about. And I was like, that's a perfect way to describe what happens a lot with, like, TV shows. Like, for me, everybody on Gilmore Girls, I'm very friendly with them. If I see them, it's like, hey, how's it going? How have you been? Congratulations on Bridesmaids or whatever, you know, Parenthood. But I don't call, you know, like, I have a wife and kids and... They live in different states, and so it's hard to really, I barely talk to my brother or my father or my mother or my wife, you know? So it's really hard to keep in touch with everybody I've worked with in the past, though I really enjoy that. I, I don't think that he and I thought we'd be as close as we are, though I certainly was like, yeah, whatever happens, I'll, I'll, I'll always hang out with this guy and, you know, go watch Cowboys or something. Um, but yeah, I guess we have to stare at somebody for 10 straight years and kind of... <laughs> It's either going to go one or two ways. <laughs> you're either going to get along really well, or you're not going to get along very, very well. And it's, but I, I think early on we knew that there would be a very easy work environment between the two of us. I think it's that I think you know the, the friendship was something that kind of developed through the years. But I think right off the bat it was like, oh, he's a cool guy. We get along. We got a lot in common. We have similar backgrounds. We have the same kind of you know similar outlook on life. Yeah, we're going to be able to work together really well and be really friendly with each other. And then, um, you know, 10 years later, I still can't get rid of the guy, so <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, one last question. Yes. The answer for me was no <clears throat> until January. I stayed at the Driscoll Hotel in Austin. Was it January? January, uh, and this is this is some people might heard the story in Houston. Uh, my wife and I, we were like, let's take a, a date night and get a sitter overnight and just go stay at a hotel in downtown Austin. We live in Austin, so we we're like, let's go, yeah, yeah. Thank you. And getting a get, like going on a vacation with your wife is kind of unrealistic when you have two kids under three. But you can certainly wait until we go to bed at 7 o'clock and like go drive downtown and stay at a hotel. And so we did. And we stayed at this place called the Driscoll Hotel. That's the oldest hotel in Austin. Uh, built by a cattle baron like in the 1860s or something. Um, and it's a really cool, cool spot. I, I highly recommend going to the Driscoll Hotel if you're ever in Austin. Uh, but we stayed in this room. It was like a weird situation where they upgraded us to this like governor's room or something. <coughs> It was a really cool room. It was one of their older rooms that really hadn't been updated a whole lot. And we get in there, and as soon as we walk in, we kind of like, we're, we're immediately going out to meet my brother and my sister-in-law at, uh, at a restaurant um, to go meet up for dinner and drinks. And as soon as we walk in, we're like, basically, hey, brush your teeth, put your jacket on, let's get. And we walk into the room, and like the bedroom's over this way, and the living room is kind of right here. And there's a lamp on the, on the table, and it's flickering. <laughs> And Jimmy was like, look. And I was like, you know, obviously in the last 10 years, I've seen flickering lamps before. But, you know, we, we changed the light bulb. And I was like, that's weird. And it stopped. And so we're like kind of getting ready. And it starts flickering again. And I was like, somebody in here? And it started flickering. I swear to God, like, this is, it's been, I mean, it's been nine and a half years that nothing's happened. And I was like, all right. Uh, I'm going to go and get a towel from the bathroom and I undo the lamp because it's hot and I switch it with another lamp that was in the corner that wasn't flickering just because I'm like, okay, just for less than these, I'm going to see if it's just a light bulb thing. And so I put in the lamp 
And now that the light bulbs are switched, and this light bulb was fine, and that one was flickering, now this light bulb is fine, and this one's flickering still. And I'm like, it's not the light bulb, maybe it's the, maybe it's the wine, whatever. And we go out to eat. Uh, Meanwhile, Jen's in the bathroom and has made a salt ring. <laughs> No, oh, she's actually getting some demon blood for her. Uh, and so then we we go back and go go to dinner, come home, go to bed. And I wake up in the middle of the night and I can see because it's like we're downtown, there's some lights coming in through the window. I can see that she's on that side of me, but I feel a hand on my back moving the sheet. <laughs> God is my witness. Not a word of a lie. And I'm I'm kind of like awake and I'm looking at her. And she's facing that way, and she's dead of the world. Uh, and I'm like, there's somebody's moving the sheets on me. Somebody's moving the sheets on my, on my back. I can feel it, it feels like a hand. It doesn't feel like somebody's hand, but I, I can feel a de definite movement to move the sheets on my back. And just like move down the bunches. And I was like, huh. <laughs> and I told Jen the night before, I was like, listen, if this is haunted, which it very well could be, they're not bad. Like, they're, I, I don't feel like bad spirits. Like something. I was like, if it's anybody, they're just like, I don't know. They're, they're just bored. Yeah. And so then, oh yeah, they're just creepy. And I got to this, the night before also, I had shut all the curtains in the bedroom and in the living room. I had shut all the curtains just to not let light in, you know. It's like, we're also downtown, so the apartment building looks into the room, and I was like, let's just shut the curtains. Uh, I go back to bed after someone moves the sheets. It wasn't my wife, and no one else in the room. The door was locked and latched and everything. And I get up in the morning, and we're just like, you know, gonna shower and go back home because the kids are gonna wake up. And, um, our nanny has to, our sitter has to go back home. And so I go into the living room. Jen's like, I'm going to jump in the shower. So I'm going to go watch the news or something. Um, so I go in the living room and the curtains are open. But not open a lot, but they're open about three feet. And I was like, I am 100% certain. But I shut them. I'm 100% certain. Bet my life on it. And I was like, whatever. Uh, and I turn the TV on. And it's, you know, in, the, in hotels these days, when you turn the TV on, like you could be watching CNN and turn the TV off and turn it right back on, and it's like, welcome to the hotel, I'm Mario Lopez. <laughs> Have you seen How to Train the Dragon? Like it automatically goes to the menu, you know? Um, <laughs> so, I, the TV hadn't been on, and I, I turned it on expecting, because I hadn't watched it the night before while she was getting ready or whatever it was. I'm expecting like, hey, you know, the fire exits are down the hall to your left. And I was just going to flip around. I turn the TV on, and it's Kyle so I'm talking to Jensen Ackles in Purgatory. It was like, <laughs> I'm not like, the weirdest thing that ever happened. I was like, all right, at least the ghosts are fans of Supernatural. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will say the, uh, the, hard, the hardest part about the whole story was uh, to convince the hotel to give me the card to his room to set all that up. Uh, I'm not staying there. <laughs> <laughs>